Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to How To Escape. This is Rarina and today I'm going to be replacing the heater inlet hose on my 1.6 liter Ford Escape. In this video, we're going to be going over what a Ford quick disconnect heater hose fitting is. We're gonna be showing you how to get in there by removing the splash shield, wipers, and air intake system, and then how to install and replace your heater inlet hose with a special Lyle tool. So let's get into these fancy schmancy twist lock fittings. Um, this part number, you can't see it because the label, but uh, there's a C there. So it is CV6Z18472-W. And again, this is the heater inlet hose. So it's the one furthermost on the left for the inlet on the firewall. Um, it has these Ford quick disconnect fittings, which are a little bit delicate. This part connects onto the fitting on the firewall, which has the same male end. And then this male end plugs in to this one right here. Now I've already replaced this hose because I had a leak right here at this point. So now I'm chasing the drip and I've narrowed it down to be this edge right here that it started to fail. So I'm replacing this heater hose because of that. But how do these connections even work? So I'd like to get into some of the specifics on how to use these fittings because they're not entirely intuitive. Um, it's pretty clear that they clock back and forth like this, but they're plastic so they'll break really easily. These spring tabs in there will break um, and these tangs here will break as well. Something to pay attention to are these two arrows that are molded right here. This shows when it's in the locked position. When that arrow is lined up with those two arrows, that means that these spring tabs are going to be lined up with these recessed slots that are molded in here. And they don't change in tension or pressure, but when it rocks into place, it locks and it falls into these slots and that's what retains it from coming off. Something else to note with the two arrows that are molded in right there is that it shows you where that post is or where that little bump is. Now that bump is a guide to fit into the notch here that's on the mail receiver when you're plugging it in. So basically you have it in the unlocked position so the gray tab is not lined up with those two arrows. And then you slide it on so that the bump is in the notch and then you clock it over. One thing that I'd really like to stress is when this is when this has been on your car like mine has for the last 10 years this plastic gets really brittle and there's really not a whole lot of material to hold on to here and it's very easy to break these tabs off or break the spring tabs off on the inside and render the whole part useless. This tool here is by a company called Lyle and it's like six bucks. I'll have the Amazon link below here it's totally worth it because this hose, if you get it from the dealer, is $70. And every time you break one of these, you're going to need to get a new hose. So how do we even get in there to get to the hose? And best access for this procedure will be removing the splash shield, the wipers and cowl, and the air intake box, as well as the duct. Tools for this procedure include jack stands, which are optional, a T25 Torx driver, 15, 8, and 7 millimeter socket, a small flathead driver, hose clamp pliers or just pliers, a catch pan for coolant, and gloves. I definitely should have had these. Step one is going to be using your T25 Torx driver to remove your under engine splash shield. Jack stands will give you more clearance, but they're not required here. Now we're going to remove the wipers and cowling. Start by taking off your cap to expose a 15 millimeter nut. Use your socket and hold the wiper arm so you don't hurt the motor. Loosen it and rock the wiper side to side to release the splines and repeat it on the other side. Next, use your small flathead driver to remove all these metal clips. Your Torx driver is next to release your brake fluid reservoir. Now we'll use these eight millimeter sockets to remove these screws and remove the flexible cowl from the top. There are snaps, so make sure to lift up. Next, you'll expose two more 8mm screws on either side. Remove those as well. And then you can lift out your cowl tray. So the main things we're going to be looking at here are keeping this brake fluid reservoir out of the way. Um, you have your air sensor here. You have your air box, which really just pops out. You have to disconnect part of the air duct here. Um, and then disconnect a connection here for the lines as well as two hose clamps but that's really all that it's going to take. All right next we're going to remove our cover. I'm going to reach in here and disconnect our air sensor. 
Next, we need to disconnect this line with this green connector here. So there is a fitting that connects this line to this air intake. Mine actually broke off a while ago. I tried to glue it back on, but it didn't stick. So I've been on the verge of replacing this part, just haven't gotten to it yet. But to disconnect this green connector, it's a U-hook, and you take your flathead screwdriver and reach in and pop that side out and pop that side out, and then it'll push back. And when it pushes back, the retaining clasps no longer hold on to the barb fitting here. And then at the mouth of the intake, there's a rubber strap here. We're gonna pop that off. That will allow this part of the air duct to lift up. So it's really just kind of a band-aid that straps over top to keep everything in line and keeps a dust seal, really. All right, so now I just have a wire going through this brake fluid reservoir. I'm just gonna gently bend it back and run it through this hole here, just to make sure the reservoir is out of the way of the air duct for what we're gonna remove. All right, now the next step is either going to be releasing this hose clamp here or releasing this hose clamp here. This is helpful to take off to get to your shifter linkage underneath or on top of your transmission area. But honestly, it's just one more disconnect here and this hose clamp to just take all of it off and have all the back access. Now, before we loosen this first hose clamp, it's gonna be easier to remove this battery cover because it takes off this corner and you can get a much more direct access point to that adjuster screw. So all you gotta do is pop that up, slide this cover off, and let that sit. Use your socket to loosen this screw on the hose clamp for the flexible rubber boot. This will loosen the air box from the hard plastic air duct. So now we're going to pull this loose. I'm going to put one hand here and the other hand right here. We're just going to rock it back and forth until it pops up. Okay. So now we got to be careful to not put too much strain on this hose. What we can do now is we can push this boot off of this hose so that that's disconnected you can lift that out like that if you'd like to remove the entire plastic duct loosen the second hose clamp further up and of course once you have this area gone and you just slide that off after all that let's finally replace the hose we are going to make sure that the engine is cool. We're going to put a catch pan underneath and we're going to disconnect the non-firewall fitting shown here. So I'm going to begin by using the Lyle tool to disconnect this fitting here. All right, that's in the unlocked position. I'm gonna pull it apart. Let's release the clasp to remove the hose from the firewall. All right, now that this hose is disconnected, we need to take out the heater inlet hose and we need to remove this black plastic clasp in order to slide the hose out towards us. So I'm gonna use this flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna pry it out. And that lifts right up, just like that. And then the heater inlet hose slides up, just like that. Now we're going to unlock the hose from the firewall. All right, and now lastly, a little bit difficult to get to, we're going to be disconnecting that quick connect fitting with our Lyle tool again. Coolant may come out, so just make sure your coolant collection pan is underneath your engine bay. All right, so we finally have it in the unlocked position. It took a few times to really get that to go counterclockwise to unlock. Um, the bumps in the wings of the Lyle tool that you squeeze and grip were a little thick when it comes to that, metal, that black line that goes underneath it. Um, I had to swap it around a few times to see if I could still get it to turn, but I did. So I'm going to now disconnect the hose and we should be okay. All right, real quick, I just want to compare how these parts have degraded over time. The one on the left is the old 
heater inlet line and the one on the right is the new one that I'm gonna be putting in. So I'm hoping that once this one's in and we have a much better fitment here instead of this old chewed up one that I'll, won't have any more drips or leaks. Now we install the new hose to the firewall. Starting with our new heater inlet hose on the unlocked position, so it's this gray tab is not in line with those arrows, I'm gonna now install it on the heater core fitting. So starting off with the Lyle tool already on here in the unlocked position. Sneak this guy down here. Get the arrows lined up with the tab. Now that that's on there, we're going to give it a good tug. It's a little difficult to tell, but it's locked on there now. To reverse what we did before, put it back in the black clasp. All right, so before we connect these hoses now, I'm going to reattach this guy under here. So pop him in. Okay, now we're going to shut this clasp. Okay. Now let's reconnect it to the three-way heater hose. And now we're going to look for the two arrows right there and make sure that the arrows and the notch are lined up with that slot there. All right. I'm going to clock it. Okay. That's on. Pop this guy off. Seems solid. Refill and check for leaks. Next, get everything up to temperature and then check for leaks on your fittings. And of course, do everything in the reverse order for reinstalling your air intake in your duct, your wipers, cowl, and splash shield. All right, well that about wraps it up on how to change this heater inlet hose. Um, hope these quick disconnect fittings make a little more sense to you now. We have the Lyle disconnect tool linked in the description below, as well as part numbers for this hose and the three-way hose that we also had to replace. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. That always helps our YouTube algorithm. Give us a thumbs up and a like if this was helpful. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.